putting North Dakota first. KX News at 10 starts now. Good evening. I'm Nicholas Paula. And I'm Lauren Kolber. Thanks for watching KX News. We're continuing our special report about barriers to justice for tribal citizens in North Dakota. And tonight, these jurisdictional and systematic problems go way beyond law enforcement and the courts. As a former U.S. attorney tells KX News, the federal government does not do enough to help build infrastructure for things like health and child care on tribal lands. We've introduced you to Amber Johnson, a former Standing Rock BIA officer. She was also a school resource officer on the reservation and witnessed the disparities firsthand. Johnson says because of a lack of educators and resources, she estimates 30% of kids are falling far enough behind to be put on an individualized plan just to catch up. On top of it all, Johnson says these kids are directly affected by high crime rates. Many of them have witnessed drug and alcohol abuse at home. And she says there are no mental or behavioral health resources to change that. I remember working the road and arresting people for alcohol or drug-related offenses and them saying, well, then send me to treatment. Like, I, I want to clean myself up. Send me to treatment. Help me get better. It's like, well, I don't know how to do that. Johnson says the suicide rate for adults and kids is off the charts. She says she's witnessed kids sit in the emergency room for 24, even 48 hours because they couldn't find a bed for them in a mental health facility after a suicide attempt. And as we reported on day one of this series, all of these issues, high crime rates coupled with low prosecution rates, little support or justice for victims, drugs, alcohol, and poverty come full circle. It all traces back to a history of racism and disenfranchisement that left tribal nations in survival mode, fighting for every inch of independence and basic human rights. And as our crime and investigative reporter Renee Cooper reports, it's tough to change when Native Americans have minimal representation in state and federal government. Inequality and prejudice against indigenous people is institutionalized. It unfolded over the course of hundreds of years through historically discriminatory policy created right here at the state capitol and even more so in Washington, D.C. I think I'm a product of, of some of those poor policies. <laughs> Representative Ruth Bavalo was elected in 2018 as the first Native American Democratic woman in the North Dakota legislature. Her story traces back to a childhood in Mandaree, growing up on the Fort Berthold Reservation. I can pinpoint one experience in particular back to four years old, visiting a church in Kildare. The priest was visiting parishioners. Uh, when he came to my mom and my family and I, he asked her where she was from, and once she said Mandaree, he immediately told her, you know, well, you should go back to where you came from, and we, we left abruptly. She says it took a long time to understand why these things happened to her. I think back to annual field trips to the Heritage Center with the Mandaree School. Um, our very first time going in the second grade, being greeted with the, uh, ah, you know, by other schools. These all too common experiences, coupled with the tragic loss of her youngest sister, led Buffalo to politics. Post bill number 10. Through policy, we have an opportunity to improve people's lives. Buffalo has lived in Fargo for years now. And although she says that kind of makes her an outsider from the reservation, she feels she is the voice and an advocate for all of her family still in Mandaree. The state doesn't keep a record of how many Native Americans have served in the legislature. After countless inquiries and lists from current lawmakers and the state library, I was able to compile a list of just eight, which is likely at least very close to accurate. Three are currently serving. Marcelay has served the longest term, dating back to 2007. There have been only two female legislators, including Representative Buffalo. Marcelay, a Vietnam veteran, says he believes the limited representation is the result of a, quote, lack of state government education at the five tribal nations. When they're passing laws. Chase Iron Ice, a lawyer and Native American activist from Standing Rock, tried his hand at running for the U.S. House of Representatives in 2016 on the North Dakota Dem MPL ticket. He tells me he had to believe he was going to win. When you took that nomination, how unusual was that? Was this a first of its kind? Had other tribal yeah. members attempted this before? And have we? Yeah, we, we've had uh, Standing Rock citizens and maybe tribal members too 
in North Dakota's legislature, but this was the first time that a Native person had run for the lone congressional seat. Iron Eyes captured about 24 percent of the vote, falling to now U.S. Senator Kevin Kramer. As the only Native American woman currently serving as a state lawmaker, Buffalo says even with progress, there is still a big deficit in representation. There's an opportunity to elect more Native American people um, into every level of government because they, they bring a worldview that oftentimes is, is left out of the conversation. A worldview rooted in cultural values, like being a good relative and a good neighbor. It's not to live off the government and not pay taxes and be lazy and, and drunk and, and dumb. You know, those are some of the stereotypes I grew up hearing. You'll never know if you can get elected unless you try. And so I think supporting um, Native American candidates, making sure that we see uh, voting rights enacted. Because, as the former U.S. Senator pointed out, not only are there barriers for tribal citizens to run for state and federal offices, but there are blockades to the polls as well. <laughs> including a state law requiring all voters to show an ID with a physical address at the polls, impacting a large portion of tribal citizens who do not have a permanent address, just a P.O. box on their IDs. Although a settlement reached in April allows Native American voters to point out where they live on a map, there is no solution for mail-in voting, which is crucial to equal representation in rural North Dakota, which very much includes tribal lands. In 2018, the polling location in Dunn County within Mandaree was shut down without any notice to the residents out in that very rural area, and a lot of them being of the elder population. So they had to drive all the way around through Mandaree, through the Badlands, to Kildare, to Manning, to get to the, the district Dunn County courthouse. Heitkamp says in the meantime, as the push is made for more diverse representation, our current representatives have a huge role to play. Any person uh, in the United States Senator and the Congress who represents a state like North Dakota who is not prioritizing our relationship, our treaty relationship with our tribes isn't doing their job in my opinion. She says leveling the playing field has to be a top priority. Reporting for KX News from North Dakota's Tribal Nations, Renee Cooper. As the lone Native American woman currently in our state legislature, Representative Buffalo says she carries a huge responsibility as a primary connection for tribal citizens who want and deserve a say in the future of North Dakota policy. Now tomorrow in our series finale, we'll discuss progress happening right now to address age-old discrimination and shrink the equality gap moving forward. Now to our COVID-19 North Dakota Watch with the Health Department reporting three